You're at home and someone breaks in. How should you handle this situation? And this is going to vary based on the laws of where you're at, uh, well, whatever information that you may have at that time as well. You know, are you expected to be home? Do you keep a normal schedule where you work during the day and sleep during the night? And it's at night or is it daytime and you don't happen to have your vehicle there, but you are home at an unusual time. Maybe you uh, became ill at work and became too ill to drive, so someone else brought you home and your car is not in the driveway. So there's no reason for anyone to believe that you're there. These things change things because if you're not expected to be there, it's more than likely a property theft type situation as opposed to if you're expected to be there it's much more likely to be a dangerous situation. So that changes things. What are the laws where you're at? You need to know that. Uh, you know, how can you defend yourself in this situation? And then also, do you even need to? So let's take a look at this, at this scenario. Uh, but the main thing this is assuming that you have uh, good self-defense laws where you're at. But I am going to get my weapon and my phone. Cellular phone, hardline phone, whatever it is, some type of communications, and whatever else I need to use that weapon. If there is hearing protection, uh, eye protection, any of those other things, it would be good to grab those if you can grab those. Um, but I, I do get that also in that order as well because the weapon can protect you immediately. The phone will summon the police that will get there when they get there. So getting the weapon is a first one to get and then getting the phone. Uh, but I'm going to initiate the 911 call as soon as I can. As soon as that weapon is in my hand and I got my phone, I'm going to initiate that while I'm getting to my safe spot. So before I've even arrived there, I grab those things while I'm on my way to my safe spot. I'm going to get that uh, 911 call started. Now my safe spot should be a spot where I have decent visibility, but I'm also hidden and I can protect lives that are in my house. Uh, if I have kids, if I have a spouse, whatever that be, I want to make sure that that spot that's chosen to be that safe spot is one that I can protect the lives that are there uh, from that position. And then I would try and start getting intel. Uh, I would I would start that process getting getting the intel and a really good idea for this as well is to already have a system in place have a have like a video surveillance system is probably best uh, having a video surveillance system that you can just hit a switch on it doesn't need to be on while you're sleeping but once you realize that something's going on, hopefully you have a switch to that over in your safe spot. And maybe even a monitor to that would be really good. Because then you can turn that on and that does two things. It creates a record, so that way as long as you remain legal in what you do, there's evidence to that. There's also evidence to what they're doing as well. And it also provides intel to what they're doing. So you can see what's coming in. Because that's one of the things, most self-defense laws allow you to use deadly force only on imminent deadly threats. Even in your own home, in most cases, that's the way it is. And you wouldn't want to use, hopefully you would not want to use deadly force on something that's not a deadly threat. You know, I would hate to find out that the guy that I shot coming into my house was just a tourist. 
somebody who got the wrong Airbnb, who got the wrong Airbnb address, happened to transpose the numbers, and his key just so happened. The one in ten thousand chance, or whatever it was, so happened that his key fit my door and let him in. Uh, and I'd hate to find out that that's what the situation was. So getting good intel is very important. It's important to for you to know what you're doing, for the police to know what they're doing. It would be helpful to be able to give them that information. Oh, this guy here has a weapon. He has a crowbar. He has a bunch of sophisticated safe drilling equipment. You know, this guy's a professional. Uh, this guy has a team. There's three people. That's very useful for the police to know. It's very useful for you to know. Getting as much intel as possible, and I really like the idea of having the surveillance system already in place. And you could even use mirrors or something else like that, too, to give a, a good view. But the surveillance system is the best when it works. To have a switch you can just hit from your safe spot and have a monitor there that you can use to see everything. Uh, and then while I'm waiting for the police to arrive, staying alert and ready, uh, just in case the situation does turn from just someone coming in trying to take your stereo to now they're coming after you for some reason, or maybe that was, you know, who knows, but just to make sure whatever the situation is, that you're staying alert you're staying ready so that way you can protect the life in your house. Uh, and unless it becomes a deadly threat situation, I would not want to have my weapon pointed in that direction, as in many states, that also is a crime. So that's where I would, once again, I have got my weapon. I'm not pointing it in every direction. I'm not going to try to clear that house. I'm going to want to get intel. So that way I can make an intelligent decision when that time comes. Thank you for watching.